Let's get this recorder. I have a gift for you, MG. Oh, really? Uh, not really, but this is an external hard disk that I purchased to save all my Azure machine learning assets, which are models, uh, Docker images or environments, codes or components. So you can take it and deploy my assets to production. This is MG MLOps, sort of, right? You don't need to manually move your machine learning assets from one Azure machine learning workspace to another workspace to be able to deploy them to production. It's not the correct way to But then how would I move my assets from dev to production? Even with the rest of our team, how would anyone know that what machine learning models, environments, codes are available across all different Azure machine learning workspaces that we have within the organization, right? Easy. You can use a new feature in Azure Machine Learning called Registry. With using mm -hmm. Registry, you will be able to share your machine learning assets for all different Azure Machine Learning workspaces you have within the organization. So for MLOps, okay. you can just take your ML assets from that centralized registry to be able to deploy the production or share it across different workspaces so to be able to use it later. how can I replace this with that sort of centralized Azure Machine Learning registry? Okay, I'll show you now. Okay. And by the way, can I still keep this external hard disk? And I, because I paid this with, with your credit card. Let's go. Hello everyone, this is MG, hoping you're doing great and welcome to another video. Have you ever heard about a new feature in Azure Machine Learning which is called Registry? Well, with using Azure Machine Learning Registry, you will be able to share your machine learning assets, namely your registered models, your machine learning environments, your curated codes or components, across all different Azure Machine Learning workspaces that you have within your Azure tenant. So this will not only empower you to make your machine learning assets discoverable across all different Azure Machine Learning workspaces and your data science teams and ML engineer team, but also it will facilitate your MLOps process because within MLOps, now you can use registry as sort of reliable source to grab all your machine learning assets which are produced in dev or sort of predefined environments and take it and all the way deploy them to production. This is a pretty cool feature. Make sure you're tuning in and let's check it out. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, let's start with understanding, first of all, what is Azure Machine Learning Registry, which is a new feature added to Azure ML. Well, I'm mentioning it a new feature because Based on the time that I'm recording this video, this feature just got announced, which is a great capability. And we're going to discuss about what is this registry and why we should use it. What are the main benefits? After having these understandings, then we will be hands on with a notebook that will go through a code that will let us know how we can interact with registry and best practices of using it. So registry is sort of like a centralized place that you can share your machine learning assets across all your Azure machine learning workspaces within your organization and Azure tenants. So let me make it a bit more clear. Before having registry in place, let's say there's a team called Team A, they have their own Azure machine learning workspaces. And because they're working on a project collaboratively, they will come up with some machine learning assets. What are those assets? As an example here, Team A will come with some registered machine learning models in their workspace. They will come with some registered components. If you don't know what is components, there's a video I created. I will add that video to the top right of the screen, uh, which talks about components. But components is like a curated piece of code from one of your machine learning steps that can be reused like a function. It has input and output. For example, there's a code that train model. 
So you want to use that training code for multiple models for multiple different use cases. You register that code once as a component and you just call it, reuse it again instead of redeveloping so you can share it with the rest of the team. And of course, team A will come up with some environments, which are some packages and defined operating system environment needed for running those codes, deploying models, so on and so forth. But the challenge is team B doesn't know what team A has created and developed in aspect of these assets. There's no collaboration here. Similarly to team C, D, E, F, all these Azure ML workspaces are potentially in silos. They are not sharing the assets together. And if team B want to know if there's a model developed and registered in team A workspace, team B member maybe need to get access if they give them permission to grab the model or, or someone manually should to sort of move those assets from team A workspace to team B so they should be able to use it. So what register is doing, instead of having your ML assets siloed in your Azure ML workspace, what you can do instead of just registering your model assets, let's say machine learning models environments in just team A workspace, what team A can do, they can register the same assets in registry. So team B will know what team A has registered and is available. So instead of team B directly going to team A, they will just go to the registry to grab those shared assets or, or also add some of their assets to be shared among rest of the Azure ML workspaces among all the organization with, with registering their stuff here. So what is registry on backend? Well, when you create registry in Azure, which we're going to show you, it will launch an Azure resource for you. And on backend, it will have a storage plus um, container images registry, sort of uh, Azure con ACR or Azure container registry that will host your environments and that storage will host your models and sort of components. So you don't need to manually create these assets again. This is going to be created and managed by Azure. So what you need to do is just simply creating a registry and on the back end, the services needed to create these shareable components will be created for you. So. Is it the only benefits of registry, just being able to share the assets across all workspaces? No, there is actually a second benefit of that, which I will call it facilitated MLOps with registry. Let me show you how. Okay, check out this picture that I grabbed. Well, within MLOps, we will have multiple environments, dev, test, or pre-staging, prod, and each environment will have their own Azure ML workspace. So previously, before having a registry, what we need to do in, for moving from dev to staging and prod, we had to move some codes, artifacts, potential models from one environment to another and finally get to the prod and deploy it. So instead of sort of manually and through DevOps moving ML assets models from one workspace to another and again to another, what we can do, dev, test, prod, if there's a data scientist in Dev and Exploratory and we have ML engineers and test and prod because these are going to be the roles they deploy the models, all of them within the Azure Machine Learning Workspaces, they can access to the same centralized registry that we talked. So we can have that registry as sort of a source of truth, a reliable centralized place to grab assets to push them in Dev, staging, or prod. Let me give you an example. I'm a data scientist, I do some exploratory analysis, then within the dev environment, I, I'm sort of comfortable that what I'm training with the subset of data, so I, I want to come up with some initial models. So I have codes now, which needs some packages to get start the training process. I can register these assets, codes and stuff to that centralized registry. So when a machine learning engineer want to grab my assets and codes to run them and test them in a staging or pre-prod, that ML engineer won't come to my workspace, grab it, or through DevOps manually push it here. My ML engineer will go directly to the registry because ML engineer know that all the assets created with Dev and Data Scientist is in the same registry. So it grab it from here, push it to Dev, sorry, push it to Preprod or Prod. Here's a critical question. Well, this is great, centralized place for having my assets there and I can take it to deploy it anywhere, right? Awesome, but do I have flexibility to define access lab, uh, permission and define that permission type for who can access to this registry? The answer is yes. You can say that my data scientist, for example, will just have read access to this registry. You can define RBAC for this registry. By RBAC, I mean role-based access control. 
or you can say not only they can read but also they can write to this registry. My ML engineers also can read and write. My ML engineers can even delete or recreate this registry. So you can define the level of permission for these personas to make sure you have a reliable registry. It won't get affected if you want to use it for production. And by the way, you can have even multiple registries. Here is just one registry mentioned the conceptual architecture here, but you can have multiple central light cataloging for your ML assets. So let me show you the one that I created in Azure Machine Learning, sorry, in, in my Azure portal, and show you that how it looks like when you create, and then we're gonna be hands-on with the notebook that how we can work with this registry. All right, this is my Azure Machine Learning workspace. So if you wanna create a registry or check out what registries are available, what shared ML models, components, environments are available within your organization, you just go one step back. You can see that the register is here and look at that shared asset. This is across your organization. You can see what machine learning models has been registered within all your organization. So let's click on registry. In order to create one, you can just click on create, give it a name, let's say test two. And you click on subscription, you want to create the resource group. And then the next step is regions. I already created one which is test here. And by regions, this is actually a great dual capability of registries. That means if you select multiple regions for this registry, for example, for test registry, I selected central US, East US as my regions. In the region section, you can select it actually when you go to next. Uh, and the reason is it will duplicate your assets across multiple regions because maybe you have a model that you wanna deploy in multiple regions. So having that duplication in different regions will uh, help you in aspect of latency, making sure assets are available in all different regions with the minimum latency needed. Of course, you can select multiple regions, but you have to be cautious about the cost because when you select several regions, you're duplicating your assets under that registry in multiple regions, right? So I'm not going to create one I already did. So if I click on next and review, it will create one for me. I can see that I have already created. If I click on it, there you go. It showed me the initial regions where I have created, which subscription it is. And you can see on the registry of test, I can have shared components, which are again, pieces of code that my data scientist has developed as an example. Environments, which are the packages, libraries needed for running those components. And models, which are the registered models with multiple workspaces across my organization but they are registered under this test registry. So these are empty as of now, I just created. I actually ran the code, these are not empty, but when you create yours, they're gonna be empty. Now the code that I'm gonna use for working with this test registry, uh, I'll add the link of that code to the video description, you can check that out. It's coming from a Azure ML examples repository, so you need to clone it in your uh, Azure Machine Learning. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So let me go to back my Azure Machine Learning Workspace. Go to Compute. Make sure you already have a compute to run the notebook. I already created one. Open Terminal. And you know that with Azure ML Computes, the Git is already configured and installed. You don't need to install it. So you can use Git command. And the repository that you need to clone is github.com slash Azure, Azure ML Examples. That's it. So with Git clone, it will grab that Azure ML example folder for you, and there you go, you did this. So I have the notebook that I want to run this example of using Azure ML register. So let's go through that notebook. Let me actually terminate this. Here's a notebook under Azure ML examples after cloning the repository that I showed you, open SDK folder, and there's a folder called uh, Python assets assets in registry and there is a notebook called share models components environments this is a notebook and this is what i ran before and i want to show you how that works but before running to this going to this notebook i have already drafted the high level architecture of what this notebook is doing so instead of just going and running it let's have a better understanding of really what we are aiming for through this notebook so here is what we are doing now I was in my Azure Machine Learning workspace and the notebook that I showed you is here, right? And we know that we already have a, actually let me change the color here. 
uh, let me change it to red okay so we already have also Azure machine and registry I created before and you know it right it's called test I just show you actually how I create it and I have it ready to register my assets here so within the notebook that I have that I showed you number one what we're gonna do I want to create some assets and register them in this shared registry so rest of the Azure Mail workspaces within my organization can use it so what are those assets first environment which is again a created sort of definition of Python packages needed for running a code what is the code I'm gonna talk about it that's a training code which is called components so let me actually maximize it so the components that I'm gonna run is a training code and I want to register that training code plus an environment that is needed to run that code within Azure ML registry so later on all this workspacing can call them and also myself can call those components too how this is number two after registering them in test registry I want to use that registered training code uh, for training plus that environment that we define to train a model in my workspace well, where I am executing my training code in my Azure Machine Workspace. There is no compute in Azure Mail Registry, right? This is not a place for running a code. This is a place to just share assets and grab the assets from it. To any workspace, here I am in my dev workspace. So this can be, for example, prod workspace or whatever. All right. Okay, now I can run my training code, which is a component and using the environment that they have been all registered in test registry right then what is next next is number three what we're gonna do is well after running that training code we're gonna come up with the model that is trained right so I need to register that model somewhere previously before having registry we had to register that model in just Azure Machine Learning Workspace which is dev here right but now not only you can register it here but also you can copy that model from your dev through number three to this registry as well so the model gonna be here not only you can grab this model again from registry but again rest of your Azure ML workspaces can call them again across your organization so now my model is shared within this registry what is number four I want to deploy this model number four so where do I need to grab that model well because that model is available in registry wherever you are grab the model from here to deploy it so I want to deploy it in dev what I'm gonna do I will grab my model from register which is here to deploy this model in my dev or I can grab the model that I have here to deploy it let's say again in prod I think the first one was prod as an example yes and deploy the model here as well so what I gotta do I'm not dealing with multiple workspaces I just have one dev workspace here number one to four that I just explained registering the components environments calling them back train a model register the model back to registry and deploy it in workspace it's all just how dev is talking with this registry now let's get back to my notebook there you go so for this notebook I'm using the second version of Python is the key of Azure ML so make sure it is installed already and after doing so the notebook is actually importing some of the packages and objects needed for running these components we're gonna talk about these how we're gonna use this first authentication we need to authenticate to my Azure machine learning workspace so for getting the credentials the default is already enough for handling most of Azure ML based SDK authentication if this gonna fail it will open up an interactive browser for you that you can authenticate so with having that credentials this is the time that I can authenticate using these credentials but here is the trick before having registry as a capability in Azure ML we needed to just authenticate to our Azure machine workspace and we call it here ML client workspace right so now here I am authenticating to my workspace and here's the object that refer to my workspace but now we have a second object to authenticate which is ML client registry using the same credentials that I authenticated to my workspace I can use the same credentials now to authenticate to my registry which registry test the one that I created I showed you right here it is 
after I created to that test registry that I showed you, if you come to your Azure ML workspace, sorry, your Azure portal, you will see that there's a test Azure ML registry created for you. If I click on it, you can see there's a web URL. If I click on that URL here, uh, that's the registry. Okay, let me sign in. All right, this is the registry I showed you. Remember I told you you can define access control and permission level on who can access to this registry until what level of permission? This is the place. When you open Azure ML registry in the portal, you can see there's access control tab. This is the place you can define permissions if you want to do it through portal. All right, let me get back to my notebook. Now I am authenticated to my workspace plus registry. What I'm going to do uh, by the way, this cell is just generating random number. If you want to run this notebook multiple times, it uses a random number as a version of your assets to make sure you're creating multiple versions. If you want to run this notebook just once, you can skip this cell. So number one, what we're going to do, let me come back to my uh, very sort of <laughs> unclear architecture. Number one is creating an environment and component in dev environment and register it to test registry. Let's do it. Well, how I am creating an environment here, I am using a Docker image, sorry, a Docker file. And if you question where is that Docker file, when you actually clone this repository, it is under this path with the parent directory, which is here. So it is calling a Docker file to create an environment and give it a name and register that environment in my registry. So go to my registry and register its environment. Instead of saying ML client registry, if I say ML client workspace, which is here, what happened? This environment will be registered in my Azure ML workspace. This is what we used to do. Now, not only I can do it, but also I can do the same registration, but over my registry, not just my workspace. So I can share this environment across multiple workspaces. Um, let me show you what is that Docker file that's coming from. So let me check where is the path. So it's under CLI folder for the repository I cloned. Uh, where is CLI? There you go, CLI, jobs, pipeline with components, Actually, we are using NYC taxi data, by the way, for training this model, it's a regression model. And then it is called environment train. There you go, there's a Docker file. And this is the Docker file that define my environment. So now rest of my organization can use this environment and Docker file for running the codes. Here is the training code that I want to also share that as well, but not yet. So. I ran this part of code and it says that it uploaded my Docker file and environment to that shared test registry. Okay, let's check out what happened to the registry. This is my test registry. You can see there's an environment tab. When I clicked on it, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> there you go. There is a circular environment with the given name that I just specified in the notebook with the version uh, that I registered under test registry by me with the given date. Perfect. Let's go to my notebook. Now I was in my Azure workspace and I created something in the registry which is out of my workspace. The second thing that I want to do the same to register in that registry after environment is my code, my training code, which we call it component. How you register a component in registry or even your workspace, you can do both, but we're going to share it. So that's why I'm using register it in Azure ML registry is through a YAML file that define that component, right? So there's a train YAML file component. Let me show you actually where it is. It should be under the same. Okay, let me just go up. Train.yaml. There you go. This is the sort of an schema through YAML that I'm defining this component. I'm saying that, hey, I'm going to create a component. What does it do? It trained a linear integration model over NYC taxi. So that's the name. This is the second version. So for the command type, here are the inputs for running this code. You need a training data. Is it a registered data set or you are specifying the data manually over a folder? Well, here it is an example and we have the data. This is actually the 
the, the training data that we have. So I'm saying that my data input type is a folder. You want to test, train, test, S split, right? You want to split this data. Um, you want to use 100% of the data for, for training or no, like you want to split some testing. So this is the mean and max of ratio you want to split. The default is 20. So 20% of the data will be used for test and 80% for training. So what are the outputs of this code or component? Remember components, if you watch the video of component I created, you know that components have inputs and outputs. The output is an ML flow based model that I want to specify under this folder and a code, of course. And, and where is the code for that component? It is under this folder. Train SRC. This is train.py. This is the code that I have. And you can see that this code expecting some inputs, which is where is the training data? What is the uh, test data? What is the where is the place that I want to put the output or the model? What is the test train split ratio? Because I have specified this as an argument for input of the training code, that's why in train YAML, when I specify the component, I'm saying that these are some of the inputs needed which are sort of the same that I need here. And lastly, how you run this code? Through a Python command. I say to run this Python code and add these inputs, which are needed for running this training code. And you can see that's just simply training a linear regression model with the given feature names, splitting them based on the given split ratio, and the model is there. That's it. So again, this train.yaml is creating a component which is a code that does training for me. So I want to register this code and component in registry so the rest of my organization can use it. The only thing that they need to change is their data. They change the data, run my code, so my code can be scalable for different potential applications. Okay, let's go to back my notebook. Let's see how we can create a component from, from this YAML file and register it in... Um, Azure ML registry. Before doing so, just one thing I forgot. You have to also tell that what is the packages, libraries, environment needed for running this uh, training code, right? Here it says, this is the environment. This is sort of a curated default environment of Azure ML. But what we're going to do, we're going to use the environment that we created before, which is here. Let me go to my uh, test Azure ML registry. Remember, we just created this component in the, in the environment in the registry. I want to use this that my data scientist created and shared as an environment for running this training code. I'm going to show you how we will re rewrite it. So let me come. So we need to rewrite this. I don't want to use the default environment of Azure ML. I want to be this one to be changed with socket and environment that I registered. So come back to my notebook. Here, this is how I am registering this code as a, in my shared registry. I say that, well, I want to load the component from that YAML. This is the way I'm defining the component. And then I say that for running this component, here's the environment that I needed. This is the environment that actually we registered in Azure ML registry. So th th remember this cycle learning environment we created and registered? I'm saying that rewrite that default environment to use mine instead and then that's it what i need to do remember the same thing we said ml client registry dot environments to register the environment now instead we say dot components to create and we call it um whatever training model so i ran this now that training code should be registered as a component in azure ML registry let's check that out so I go back to my Azure ML registry and under components, there you go. There is a code or component registered under this name by me. And now rest of my organization can use this training code. Even myself, I can call this code back from registry in my workspace to run it. Let's get back to my notebook. What is next? Now I want to get this component, which is a training code, from that registry back to my Azure ML to run a training job. So I say that go to that registry, which is test, get components, which is named as this. This is the one I just showed you be registered. Okay, now I have it. 
and now I want to run a training pipeline or training job in my Azure ML Dev workspace using the code that I grabbed from registry. So this is how I'm defining pipeline. I'm defining a function that will grab that training component or code from registry and run it with the given training data. Where is that training data? Well, that's a URL. It's a under folder data transform. It's here. And of course, for running this, you need a compute, right? There's already a CPU cluster compute I created. That's why I just put the name of my cluster and done. Now I need to run this pipeline, right? So where do I run this? Again, the registry doesn't have compute. You have to run it in your workspace. That's why I'm connecting to my workspace. And I say that run this job that I have specified on the top, give it a name, done. Go ahead and then grab the name of the job for me. So you can see that within my workspace here, I was able to train, run the training code. And now this code is giving me a model. So I want to register that model where you can register in Azure ML workspace here, and then also copy your co model to Azure ML registry to share this model with the rest of the organization. This is what I'm going to do. Here I'm saying that, well, go through the outcome of that training job and with the given direction, because this is the place that model going to be outputted from the, my training code, grab that model for me. This is what this part is doing. And then I want to register this in my workspace, right? I'm saying that, hey, I have a model. This is, I imported this from Azure ML SDK with the given path on the top. Give it a name, register it in my workspace. Now, if I go to the models, there should be a model registered with called NYC Taxi. But also, I want to register this model in registry to go beyond just my workspace. Very similar thing. Now, I get the model. This time, I'm saying that copy this model from my workspace to the registry dot models and register my model. Done. Let me go to back to my registry to see if the model is there. Tests. Uh, okay, go to test. Here's models. There you go. NYC taxi model is beyond just in my workers, but it is in test registry. Now, anyone within my organization can grab this model to deploy it anywhere. Dev, prod, even another dev environment. And everyone in my organization can come here if they have permission to see what models across my organization has been registered. Now I'm breaking the silo of my own workspace so everyone knows what's happening with the rest of the information that you can tag with this model. So coming back to my notebook, uh, I want to skip this optional part. This is for the time that you want to have some file manually uploaded here to register to registry. But now the last part, number four, that we discussed in the diagram was deploying this model. Now you want to deploy this model in prod environment, in dev Azure ML, prod Azure ML. Here I want to deploy to the same workspace. So I want to grab that model from registry to be able to create an online endpoint out of it. What you can do, you can just import manage online endpoint from Azure ML SDK as we did, give it a name and authentication method, and you say that, hey, I want to create an endpoint out of this model inside the workspace. You cannot deploy a model in register. Register is a place for hosting your models, not really deploying them. There is no compute again there. So I'm deploying it here. And then after creating this sort of uh, managed endpoint definition, that's the time you can deploy it. You can give it a name for that managed endpoint with the sort of in compute type, the number of the compute, then start to create that endpoint. It might take a couple of minutes and you say that, 100% of my traffic, I want to go all the way to this compute when someone want to call prediction. It's sort of a green and blue or rollout deployment. So you can redeploy this model with a new version and let's say put 80% of the traffic go to the new uh, version of deployment and 20% to the old one. So you're dynamically changing the traffic for the new deployment. If you don't know what I'm talking about, rollout deployment, what is that 100% traffic? check out the video that I discussed about what is rollout deployment in Azure ML. I will add this to the top right of this video uh, screen. Check that out. But after deploying the model, which is going to take 
just a couple of minutes that's the time I can test that deployed model with some scoring samples and that's it you can see that the fare of the NYC taxi has been predicted based on a model that I deployed here but I grabbed that model from registry which may be someone else another team but yet another Azure ML workspace was created I grabbed it from registry and I'm good to go so that was a little bit long video I just want to make sure I explain enough what is registry in a simple manner go through this code to see this how we can track in action and mainly check out the benefits and how it will really facilitate your MLOps and collaboration across your organization within Azure Machine Learning. That's it. Motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going. Take care, my friends. We'll see you in the next video.